gorgeous dress. Thank you, my darling. It's from you. Is it? <laughs> it's from last year. It's really lovely. Yeah. Yeah, it was from last year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, my darling. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. One of nine is one. A one-year-old child. Starting uh, to walk alone. Yeah, starting to walk down, alone. down, getting up. <laughs> getting up. <laughs> it is getting up. Keeps getting up. It is. It's a good child. I've got a good episode this week. The Big Daddies. Yeah, it's really about your dad, but I thought it was just a nice opportunity to introduce my dad, Leslie Anthony. He's affectionately known now as L.A. By you? Anyone else? Yeah, I'm one of four boys, so all the boys... When we had to call him dad, we called him dad, but now it's L.A. One of the great differences between my dad and your dad, my dad would not like that. Having a name other than dad, he just loves dad and granddad. Two different characters, aren't they? His mum was very religious. Mm. His old man won too religious. He's one of three boys, and he was the religious one. Dad's one of ten. One of the religious few, but then they've all just had massive conversions in lockdown. Yeah. Since lockdown, maybe, and and with his with his illness as well. I think it just calls it calls the question, doesn't it? You know, what's yeah. what's going to happen next? That's right. It is easy to get washed up in kind of warm, fuzzy language. I've watched a few atheist videos about. They are funny. They don't do justice to the church's views. They just come up with a kind of what, what the caricature. Yeah, They're but, laughing about yeah, Catholics. The, yeah, not really, because the Catholics take like the hard line on stuff, mm -hmm. traditionally. They'll reference that. But they just say, you know, they say it's death and Dalton, or the party's going on, but suddenly you have to leave the party and everyone else is still at it. And that's just it, that's it for you. There's yeah. nothing in between, there's not a, uh, you're a bit alive and you're a bit dead. Well, I mean, what about the, the old butterfly turning into a butterfly or a cat or reincarnation? Oh, reincarnation. <laughs> I suppose, uh, fair enough, but eventually the world is going to blow up and you know, run out of energy and stuff, so you're going to reincarnate to space dust. I don't know if we should go into that. <laughs> We're not going into that. <laughs> but do you want to say about... Well, what is it? Yeah. Yeah. How credible is our point of mm -hmm. view? How credible is the Catholic worldview? Well, yeah, so the faith of our father's mummy. My mum definitely wanted to marry a Catholic. I think after some life experiences, she made up her mind. Yeah, my mum, well, if anyone saw mum's episode, she was just <laughs> like completely Catholic in yeah. a Catholic bubble and couldn't imagine yeah, my mum be anything outside. Like Irish Catholic mums, yeah. educated at the convent. That's, that's where the similarities end, isn't it? Your dad is a socialite, he's chatting to mm. everyone. Yeah, so they've got, a super, they've got a strong faith, them guys. So dad is, this, he loves social, he thrives on people and yeah. loving them and being with them. And your dad's like the quiet. Yeah, he is. Chucking in loads of rosaries <laughs> quietly, doing the weights. <laughs> he is. Old school, isn't he? Yeah. He's 84, been on insulin since he was five years old. He has incredibly He's incredibly type 1 healthy. diabetes. Yeah. So the knee, that's an injections <clears throat> pre-World War II. He can remember the bombers. His mum had to make decisions about whether she would buy food or insulin. Yeah, no yeah. NHS. So it's virtues that have gotten through, really. Habit. Yeah. Just ticking over, slow and steady, wins the race for LA. I see you're inspired by him in time. We are. I mean, all four boys are different. I'm, I must say, LA's a great testament, because he got married late, didn't he? He got married at 42, so he's already had a life, really. You know, he's not as interested in the baby phase. I'm not. <laughs> oh, LA's not... <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't be taking us out sports or nothing. It'd be mum that dropped us all off at sports clubs. No, kind of not hands on. Your dad was a youthful dad. Out there, but LA was just you know, reading his books, doing his biology. My dad's both did biology. Oh, yeah, they did. <laughs> I think LA's a good testament to... Like a lot of stuff on social media, should I do this with my kids, should I take them out? You can get quite anxious about what oh, to do true. with your children. Yeah. Dad is not hands on Not a concern about this. <laughs> this <laughs> Be not even a beep on the radar. You know, as long as we went to mass, said our prayers. But he's so consistent and always there. He's like yeah, a heartbeat. Yeah. He's like constant. Parents constant, let us go out constant. in the countryside and stuff. Four boys. Two could have been pro sportsmen, I think. R Richard played for Warrington Wolves. Rugby. Rugby league. Declan who probably could have been the biggest. He, he would have been like the Roy Keane version of a rugby player. He was really good at rugby, but he packed it in dead young age. The coach was always banging on to mum, look, get him back down, I want him here. Because he just, he was ruthless sportsman. Your dad raised these boys, they love him. Yeah, oh yeah, we all get on. Uh, and then Dom doing, you know, he's like a doctor of something in engineering and stuff, and here he is playing his fancy piano and stuff. So children just pick up and do their own talents, I think. You know, 
Yeah. You're, four, you're four sort of like stereotypical boys at like four different corners of... <laughs> yeah, of spe- some spectrum somewhere, <laughs> yeah. aren't they? Some study, probably. But I think for dads out there that fret about, oh, I've got to do this for my children or whatever, mm. just let us work it all out. You know, our love language in the house was intense Mickey taking. It'd be rude. With four boys, there was kind of no women to get in the way, really, of <laughs> that curve and where it could go. Mum kind of quite enjoyed it, I reckon. And LA would be like, it wouldn't say much, but it would be quite cutting if, you know, if it would say something. Something little out of their box and then take it away from them. I think okay. so. Thanks, Mum. Let me get that little piece. Some uh-huh. It looks oh, it's right in the middle here. Then. Oh, I know what's good, Dad. Let's see you fall a bit. <laughs> bit more, and I'll get I'll get a middle one. Out there. Out there. What's that? Oh no, thank you. I've got a cup of tea. <sighs> Yeah. So I was thinking, chromium's good for reducing blood sugar or helping to manage your blood sugars. We've both got bellies. bellies. <laughs> yeah, you've got a good reason. <laughs> <laughs> they might think this is the antenatal class. <laughs> and I'm more advanced. <laughs> You're just giving me your son. Holy yeah, Spirit. Good. Amen. Amen. So I'll ask you a load of questions. Okay. And if you don't answer them, don't. <laughs> About three months ago, you started having some funny, life-changing <laughs> things going on. And then about three weeks, ago three weeks ago yeah you had a diagnosis which was a biggie was it <laughs> you tell me <laughs> well, i think everyone else knows about it but and you know what um mum was so involved mm. oh lovely daddy Dear mum. anyway she... your mum or my mum <laughs> 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 well, actually, we did go to her grave and pray for you. There you go. Her and Grandad. Your dear mummy has been a saint, as always. But um, she's been through a different journey, as always. You know, she's, uh, she's done so much, really. She's incredibly compassionate and kind and thinks of everything. And like the children, you children have been wonderful. So thank God for Oh, Dad. That changed things with you and mummy, even suddenly you really need each other. I really need time <laughs> even more now. And the other wonderful thing is, like yesterday, Margaret said about going for a walk. I said, that's great. So along the way, everyone's helping out in, in a positive way. Yeah. You know, that's the good thing. There's, it's not doom and gloom. It's a lot of blessings. You know, I might cry, but that's just a little bit of em- emotional leakage. <laughs> <laughs> and I can just praise God for the, this experience of the whole life, but this element of it, this, this illness, has been a revelation in many ways. So people from all over the world are praying and loving and supporting and offering help. And, and obviously my own family, my children and my grandchildren. So I've been lifted. But, you know, poor mum's gone through it. The other side of it and, you know, supporting everybody before this anyway. Now carrying on and, you know, sleepless nights and all sorts of things and worries about things. and. I said, well, thank God for my holy wife and children and all the other lovely people. People we've heard from, people have gone back to church, people have been praying that didn't used to pray and all that. So, goodness, true, deep goodness. I nearly said it's like a tsunami of goodness, but I said, no, tsunami is more on the surface. This is even more profound. Wow. And Father Michael said it's like an earthquake. Oh. <laughs> so, you, you don't seem to feel bitter. Oh, I don't see any of that bitterness no. or anything about no. this illness. No, not one iota. I've looked after people with brain tumours and all sorts of other tumours. There's other tumours which are much more painful. This one, people say, well, you look remarkably well. I said, well, I don't know whether they actually did anything. I just put a bandage on my <laughs> head. <laughs> my brother John reminded me yesterday about 
uh, his neighbour who ended up in the hospice, uh, and he was only 52-ish, he was young. And for those of the people who are watching, Dad, you were a palliative care doctor. Yeah, in, in a hospice, for... yeah. 28, oh, wow. was it 28 years? Long time. Long time, anyway. And you retired just over a year ago. Yes. On the Assumption, 15th of August. It, it was. Special well, case. I had a wonderful privilege. But it, it opens your eyes to the fact that we are in this life, we're not here forever. And this gentleman who was in, he was very distressed when he got the. Um, uh, diagnosis and he was at the local hospital, the Lister Hospital, and he couldn't sleep at night because he, you know, he knew he, there was no cure for him and he was very upset. But then he was sitting on his bed and he could see the motorway and he could see people going to work and backwards and forwards on the motorway. And he said to himself, I'm lucky really, he said, at least I've got some time. Some of these people going to work, they won't come home tonight, they'll have a car crash, a stroke or something. He said, at least I've got time to get my affairs in order. I can say my thank yous, I'm sorry, I love you. He looked in a positive way, turned it around. So we all have a choice. You can turn things around, but it's up to your individual self. You can't change the actual thing, but you can change the way you react to it. Mm. So that's important in life, every situation. Countryside, that was great. That was a great decision, actually, where to live. Countryside, that really helped us. Mm -hmm. The na nature raises you. And imagination, and yeah, yeah, each other, yeah, just having more than one child. It's very different in our house. Yeah, the very... girls, the girls over our side. Yeah. There's so many girls, six girls, three boys, and then all the granddaughters as well. And then all the grand more grandsons your side. It's funny, isn't it? Mm. You see that, that in your dad, you see that influence in your dad. Yeah, and he loves all his girls and his boys. He loves them all. Mm. But he's just, he thrives on the people, yeah. Yeah, Ali would not thrive on. Not these anti, he's not kind of the stoic, bed. quiet. Mm. He's still, he has got a sensitive side, you know, more as he get older, but even when he was younger, you know, he'd praise people and mm. be a hard taskmaster. Yeah, I'm not like my dad as a dad. But Do you try and, like anything about him that you think, I oh, like that? Yeah, I'd, I'd see him sometimes when I wake up in the morning, he'd be saying his De Profundis. I think he'd say some prayers to St Francis. Yeah, he'd say this prayer, he'd have this little beat-up prayer book, which he must have had since Africa days. He'd be saying every morning, and there'd be one line, I think it's a St Francis prayer, if you, O Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive, but with you is found forgiveness for this, we revere you. And he'd always say that every day. I suppose that kind of sunk in over the years. Mm. It almost seems like we're set up to fail as Catholics, but anyway, that's another big chat about free So work. is that something you want to do in the mornings? Yeah, I don't. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not as habitual as my dad. In fact, you're the. You've really raised the standard on that front. Well, I wasn't. It's not natural to me. So I thought. I think marriage. <laughs> Someone's has. got to. You've done it, but <laughs> marriage has helped. But you've been really been the. I'm not like my dad in that respect. Mm. You're a lot like your dad, I would say. Do you like a chat? Yeah, you do like a chat. You're a bit like my old man as well. That you're well. You're home bird as well. Mm. You like it at home. Mm. Mm. I do love routines and prayers and times, just because otherwise if I don't have them, like this week it goes all a bit, <laughs> it goes a bit everywhere. So, there we, so, I, so I suppose what I want to say is that for Catholics, we're mainly saved through the family, aren't we? Someone's held on to the faith or kept it going, and that's how others come back. Mm. And you can see that thread in our families going, in my family, your family. And I think also the importance of the father being the head of the family and taking that place, that is evident in both our families and as much as our mums are it's funny isn't it like they are the busy of, ones aren't they yeah they are yeah. busy and they're the ones that probably control a lot of what's going on really but they give it to the dad to yeah. take that stance and just to mess it up <laughs> no <laughs> just tell, yeah. like lead the prayers really? and really makes a difference and whatever society it wouldn't I don't think it says so much now but whatever it might previously have said to mock it it's evident that it does work mm. you know, if you do it it's kind of Simple, slow, steady. The world has gone well crazy in the past 10 years. You know, maybe 20 years ago, you'd think, oh, religion, we're doing just fine without God, thanks very much, you know, I've got nice stuff and all my family's here, but when it's breaking down. And that's a big you part of You see bigger scale breakdown now. That's, yeah, you do, mm. yeah. That's a big part of this channel is to... Make the case. Yeah, make the case for family and the power of it. Yeah. And you'd have to be 
uh, rocket, rocket sciences, things, yeah, yeah. just virtues, study. Mm, and I, lo- I do love that about seeing all these different families and even just our different dads and mm. probably everyone's going to relate to different, you know, oh, yeah, my dad's a bit like that or no, not like that and different. And What is the consistence? Red, want to get to heaven, yeah, want to set up prayers, prayers, how do we get them in there? In the is it that you have that routine in prayer in the day? Like we, we, I used to look at my dad and think, I can't do that, I can't. Me and you didn't have it in us to be like, right, that's it, it's prayer time. <laughs> you, do have, you do get we your do. own style, you though. You get yeah, it, because we know we really, really want it and we need it. Yeah, our style is different. I wouldn't be doing it like my old man and you ain't doing it exactly like your old man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're doing it. And it was, he was old-fashioned in his time, and that was a long time ago. I think it's worth celebrating that, however antiquated he might seem, if you kind of really got to know him. There's his son's... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. Peter just needs help with the microphone. <laughs> I like sons like I, I do a lot of tech stuff. Dom does like total gobbledygook for Siemens. You know, I'm not going into everyone's personal lives, but you know, don't have to worry too much, Rhett, what kind of dad exactly yeah, you are. Was, as if you're behind some kind fretted. of curve. Yeah, he's not fretted. Yeah, it just he's, he's got on with it. He's kind of followed followed the rules. Had rules. And he ain't been amazing at it like Preta. Go on forever, Maria. We'd have a laugh at, about it at the time. Rosary could take 45 minutes, midweek. Yeah, we did start adding prayers on, and then Dad did start saying, OK, we're not going to keep adding all these prayers on. Did he? he like, he's, yeah, he'd say... You've got to draw the line. Yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> Once the Hell Holy Queen is not even the halfway point, he's got out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> and so here, this, so this week is about... Love holding your hand, Maria. Faith of our fathers. Yeah, and it's really about your dad, mm. but I just wanted to say about our, both our dads. Mm. And here we are. dads out there. P- Peter always prays for the dads in the fifth decade. Yeah, do, yeah. Peter's decade to lead in the family. Yeah, dads, conversions, yeah. get dads back. Mm. Mm. Need them. Cue music. <laughs> Got a little like patient table over there. All these... <laughs> my big bell. You see my big bell. <laughs> remember when you were a child? Remember got a bell? Yeah. I'd we'll ring it out in the park. <laughs> yeah. Call us in for rosary. <laughs> yeah. I'd just call you and Joe said we used to go running because it was so Yeah, we'll, we'll come. <laughs> so you've really grasped, like taking on this. The big. It's a big like suffering and. A massive challenge, really, isn't it? And I think, like, Jesus has got this special mission for you, and I well, see I've that. Well, I've worked what, with the sick for the 50 years, haven't I? So it's been a wonderful privilege, and I've learnt so much from my patients and their families. Illness does not affect an individual, it affects the family. So when you say suffering, I haven't had much suffering that way, no physical real suffering, but, you know, I've obviously got um, cognitive, a little bit, not it was bad before. <laughs> Now I've got an excuse to forget people. <laughs> Don't forget me, Paul, please. Who are you? I remember when I, I had suffering years ago and I said to you, what, what, is, the, what is the answer about yes. suffering? You said to me, whatever you said, but the thing that really stood out was, it's a call for love. Yes. And I really felt that at the time, that like people uh, really stepped up. Uh, and I can see that, you can see that. Good this... comes out of bad, so, you know, it's not all doom and gloom. So thank God for everything. He, he's in control. He's almighty and all loving, so it means everything that happens has happened, he's allowed it to happen for our good. And you have confidence then that whatever happens, a lot of suffering comes from fear of the future. You know, and you you engender anxiety because you think, oh, it's going to this, that and the other. No, I'm not anxious about it. People go through what would seem to be a lesser operation of illness, but they can go through a lot more suffering than I've gone through. And there might be more suffering, but whatever. God's will be done. Don't you know, fear not. How many times is that in the gospel? Fear not. It's 365. <laughs> Did I get it right, Daddy? Did, I get the point? Did <laughs> <laughs> you're top of the class. <laughs> Unity, unifying. See, that's what our Lord said, may they all be one as we are one. Because this is making us unified. 
Yeah. It's lovely, isn't it? <laughs> and is that cool for that? Yeah. So, the, so like, investing in, like, a good death, I suppose, yes. and, and investing in our eternity is what we, <laughs> we need to be putting our time to. And looking back now, what do you think you're... And I'm not, I'm not saying this is the end or anything no. else. You know, the doctors yeah. say X, but God knows, whatever, yes. whatever is possible yeah, and whatever yeah. he wants. Looking back, do you think, oh, I'm so glad I really built up, like, routines of prayer yes. or your, like, faith. Yes. Those are things that maybe were tough at the time you now yes. think, oh, I'm so glad I really Oh, absolutely, because people have gone back to those things. And sometimes I, I regret being too strong and officious and harsh and not soft. I might have put some of my children off, you see. Being not me. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you did at one point. <laughs> yes, there you are, you see. No, <laughs> no, I, I made a call for maximum call. <laughs> it, it humbles you, so you, you can get, you know, recognise that you know, you're not perfect, and not you, me, none of us are, but uh, it, it, it humbles you. And how God is so good. I was thinking of St Paul and how he was going around killing people and how he became you know, the greatest evangelist going around the world and suffering so much for our Lord. You had this big diagnosis and then there's all this going on yeah. that weekend. It was a Friday we heard and then all this sort of... It, was, it almost felt like there was quite a lot of rush and things on our behalf. I yes. hope you didn't feel too much of it. But no. <laughs> um, And then that following week was the operation on the Thursday. Yeah. And then just before then, yeah. two grandchildren were born. Fantastic. <laughs> what week? a wonderful blessing too. It was like life. And... And there's another one coming. There is. Praise God. And, uh, you know, it never stops. God's goodness is infinite. We were planning to have, like a few months ago, maybe it was providential, I just thought, let's have Christmas at our house. Yeah. Give Mum a break this year, she never wants a break, but let's try. Yes. <laughs> we'll have Christmas at ours and get all the family together and try and get everyone m coordinate the in-law yeah. <laughs> Christmas to be next Christmas so that yeah. this Christmas we could all be together. And then it come closer and obviously with your diagnosis and then that you had the operation a week and two days before Christmas. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so then it was like, you know, you needed to be in isolation and stay safe. Yeah. It is such a special day yes. and it's such a special feast day. It will be so special to be together. Yes. At 10.30 p.m., Christmas Eve, we yeah. had a chat. We did. <laughs> we left it to right at the end. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful that you offered that opportunity for us. I thought, I, I can't be away from the family unit like that. So we, we decided, yes, here we go. Praise God, because it's the most wonderful celebration of Christmas. What would be highlights for you? I went to Holy Mass. When you can't go, you appreciate it more. But then the, the wonderful ambiance with the family and the, the children's production of the Nativity, so everything was wonderful. But seeing people intermingle, and all my children there, except Francesca, unfortunately, but it's a lovely, lovely thing to see the unifying effect. And food is yummy, and it's lovely to celebrate. Oh, wonderful. It's quite a Catholic thing to do, celebrate with a meal, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Oh, gosh. Well, to be Catholic, you celebrate. <laughs> Otherwise, you're preparing to celebrate. <laughs> so, yes, it's wonderful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
No, I'm not You're afraid so of it. You're so chilled out. No, I mean, genuinely, I've dealt with death and dying throughout my career, and my religion has helped me through every step of it. And I can see things, and I try and point people into a way that they can think of it in a different way, but obviously not everyone's blessed with a great faith, and it's important to be in a state of grace. You know, that's how we were taught as children, and if we were taught to go to confession regularly, and... Uh, you can offload the sins and God forgives you. You know, He forgives everything. If you're genuinely sorry for sins, He will uh, forgive you and you can come out in a state of grace. And like Mother Teresa said, someone complained about Catholics going to confession and just coming out and sinning again. She said, look, a sinner goes into confession, confesses his sins, and he comes out a sinner without those sins. But he's still a sinner. So this is the great thing that we're going to fail again and again and again, but our Lord loves each one of us in our, our trying of, of things and using the great sacraments to stay in a state of grace. You get strength, and it helps you through all the trials and tribulations that you're going to face. It's not, we're not in heaven yet, so you're going to have to have, you know, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. I really felt, so, somebody had said something to me, a lovely Lady Mary who was on one of our episodes. Yeah, a priest had come to her when she was, she'd been delivered some, you know, a really bad prognosis about her fertility. Yes. And he said, Jesus is looking, he's, he's carrying the cross and he's on the way yeah. up Calvary and he is looking through the crowd for someone to suffer with him, to have yes. this special mission. And he looks, he, yes. he see, and I thought, yes. he's seen you, Dad. Yes. And he's looking at you and he's saying, <laughs> come on, let's go, let's go. And it, I've got a great mission. You are you are yes. the man for the job right now. And this is like the, the gift of suffering, I know is an unpopular phrase, but yes. one of the roots of yes. our faith, really, yeah, like absolutely. the suffering, the value of suffering. Yes. And like you say, even already, just in three weeks since this diagnosis, there's people praying yes. who did not pray. No, it wasn't. There's people going to mass who didn't go to mass. No, exactly. Who are receiving that's the sacraments. That's makes my heart jump with joy. The, the graces that are and coming, are flowing. Are flowing, yeah, in the torrent. It's wonderful. Praise God, and it's still coming. And when he selected me, he selected you and Pauline and all, you know, all the family. It's all part of one. It it's is, and then me. the people that hear this story, and we hear any suffering, every one of us is called to something, whether it's, yes. say, a Hail Mary. Yes. Is it so go to a Mass? Yeah. Is it have a Mass said for yeah, somebody? Yeah, yeah. Offer up our communion yeah. for them? We're all in on the mission. Yeah. We're all called for the mission. We are. And at different times, in different ways. Absolutely. And this is your special yeah. way at the moment. You want all your family to be one together for eternity. So this is a way that God's using us to get together more prayerfully and people coming back to the, the church that lapsed. Thank God for this opportunity to, to grow together and get ready for the great heavenly kingdom to come. Yeah, and people are watching on, and I think, you know, you have been in the community, yeah. standing up in your faith, pro-life, massively marrying and loving the rosary <laughs> and saying the Angelus when it was really unpopular with all our friends around. And, <laughs> and you have really stepped out, and so now I think as well people will be watching and thinking... Yes. When things get tough, like, is the yeah. face still, is it, yes. are we denying, are we wavering a bit, thinking, yeah. oh, maybe not, or is it stronger? Yes. And I think, yeah. stronger? Oh, it is stronger. <laughs> yeah, one of the neighbours sort of implied that this is, your God's not doing you much good, is he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, that sort of question that people ask. Say, so, you know, that you, you've been so good, and look at you, you've been so holy and religious, or whatever people want to say. <laughs> That's what you get. This and is, then people think, the oh. This is he treats his friends. Yeah. No wonder he's got so few of them. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't see it like that. <laughs> I see it totally the opposite. If we want to get to heaven, yeah. this is the thing, I think. Yeah. This is the difference, isn't it? We want to get to heaven, then... No cross, no crown.
And Dad, did you feel like there was some anything you felt particularly drawn to when this diagnosis, which would you know is life changing, yes. came to you? And did you think anything, maybe when the dust has settled a little bit, that you felt really drawn to particular saints or yes. prayers? Divine mercy. <laughs> Divine mercy. Oh. God is good. <laughs> and he wants all of us in heaven, even the worst sinners, he wants us all, every single one of us. I've, I've prayed the Divine Mercy more. We're all crying now. And so Mum was saying as well, she knows you're waking up in the night time doing, <laughs> praying through the night. Night time is a good I time. You to pray. A lot <laughs> Night time's a good time to pray. There's no noise around, no distractions. It's true. Oh, well, yeah. And you can concentrate and you can think of each thought. prayer and be deep in your heart. Mm. Oh, it's wonderful. Praise God. But you know, thank God. And then Mum's about waking up. I said, Well, I go back to sleep. <laughs> no. <laughs> this obviously brings up something that is about preparing for a for our death yes. and it's something that we should all be doing and actually even in November it was sort of brought to my attention this memento mori did you remember hearing it like that memento no. mori and that we I think it was Saint Benedict in his rule he said we should always have death in front of us and not as like a, a really no dire and no, sad no. thing but actually this is about also yeah, receiving a, a and the hope for the return the eternal reward and you know I'm <laughs> conscious we don't actually hold you back from that for too long either <laughs> You know, it's got to get in a good balance. Whether you live for another day, weeks, months, years, yeah, yeah. 20 years, yeah. about preparing for a good death. I've been blessed with time to focus on me. I, I never thought I was going to get ill, but I thought it might happen, but it has happened. But it's a wonderful blessing that you've got time to prepare. But you know, What things do we have, like in our Catholic toolkit, do you think that can... Well, we've got the knowledge then, yeah. that Jesus has risen from the dead and, and fear not. So whatever happens, we don't need to fear it because God is with us and it's all part of his loving, perfect plan for each one of us. And whatever time it is, whether it's in the morning or, or the noon or whatever in our lifetime, as we think, he, he's got other things. So, None of us live beyond 100, usually, so we've all got to prepare. I remember you used to ask uh, an Irish lady about how she was. She said, I'm dodging the undertakers like the rest of you. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of this, it'll be automatic to you and sound obvious, but for you, the next day, the next thing we did was get to church yes. and we all came to that next morning mass yes. together. And then you went to confession. Yes, yes. And anointing of the sick. Yes make or break whether we, whether yes. we make it yes. or we don't even yes. you know in terms yeah. of sins that we have that yes. we want to cleanse ourselves Absolutely. of church yeah. provides the means to get to heaven and we've got the means to prepare for a holy death and the confession is so important you know we're blessed to be able to uh, offload our sins and ask god for the grace of repentance and uh, amendment and also go forward in a positive way and learn from it and pass it on to others. So, no, I, I, it's not a negative thing. And, and the anointing of the sick and Holy Communion and, and, and the Mass every day, if you can, praying together and supporting each other. A brother helped by his brother is like a strong city. That's a proverb. So I don't feel alone. I feel very much part of a loving family of you know people around the world. My own family's been fantastic as well, of course. And for your, do you think your younger self would have understood this? I wouldn't have understood it the same way, in some ways, but in other ways I would. I've been blessed with good faith. And maybe without good faith we can pray, we can pray for this gift for, you know, some of us who struggle in Absolutely. faith journeys to pray for yeah, good yeah. faith, because it is... Yeah, yeah. Facing the illness and facing a potential of death at some stage, all of us are going to go through that door and... You know, no, I think it's a, a choice we make, and so many people are making wonderful choices and helping us all through it. Not just me, dear, dear mum, and all the family. You know, everyone needs support, don't we? Many years ago, a miracle happened. Mary, you will conceive and bear a son. He will be the son of God, and you will call him Jesus. So Mary went to her husband to be Joseph and told him the good news. 
Mary, Mary, are you okay? Joseph was unsure, but I think we all feel like that sometimes. Mary, I'm so glad to see you. Do you realise that you are the Virgin Mother of God? Yes, Mary. God, I do. We have no room. Hello, how can I help you? I need a room because my wife is pregnant. Mary's baby was born. It was such a glorious day. <laughs> Like you say, and I know it's maybe sounds cliche and people bang on about it, but giving us the faith is oh, yeah. everything. Just mm. nothing else matters. Yeah, I just yeah. feel with my children, I think yeah. if you have nothing, I just don't mind whatever you do, yeah. Yeah. have the faith. Yes. And I think through that anyway, living a life where you want to be more virtuous, you will work your hardest and you yes. will, you know, like you worked yes. from You've always worked hard. You've worked from yeah. being a porter in the hospital and yeah. loving people in that way and yeah. then becoming a nurse and then becoming yeah. a doctor. Yeah. And you have yes. shown us to, that this life of virtue is yes. massively impacted yeah, on your yeah, life, yeah. on the, all the people. Many people that have been watching, yeah. you know, hearing, because they knew that you, you served their family in the hospice and their, their yeah. mum and dad and auntie and But, you know, I'm always aware that your mum... There's no one works hard. <laughs> Although mum couldn't come in <laughs> no. for the to visit you in London, no. but there, you did have a special visitor, a monk. Now he couldn't come in physical person, oh. but part of his very special relic came from North Wales <laughs> to Warrington, down on the train with lovely Maria Haynes. This is one of the most amazing you know, gifts of love, and Maria Haynes is a lovely friend we've known since San Damiano days, and she heard about the illness and she wanted to bring Padre Pia's mitten, I think, to, to bless me. She couldn't get a hold of that, but she, I think she lives near Manchester or Derby and she went across to Wales to get it <laughs> on a train <laughs> and back again and now to London to meet Mum and they, they got the, uh, it wasn't a mitten, it was a lovely relic. Of his vestments. The vestments. So, and I was with that for an hour or so. So uh, these are the people you don't even think about at the time first line, but the, the word's gone out and people have just spread it and, and the love has engendered such goodness. So, yeah, Padre Pio came to me and, and he's still with us. Thank God. He's a goodie. Oh, yeah, he's a wonderful holy saints, yes. And they one of your gorgeous baby god got grandchildren. Oh, yeah, one of the new ones is, is called Pio. Pia. Oh, Pia, sorry, not Pio. That's the boy. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> after Pio. <laughs> Dad, thank you so much. Oh, no, thank you, so Dad. Proud and of all you. the great love. And we're cheering you on and we're I praying know. for you. And thank oh, you, Daddy. Thank you. And thank you so much for watching <laughs> our one of nine series. Thank you for praying for our lovely Dad. And he's one of the treasures thank of our church. Thank you very church. much, we everybody. Still have. He is a treasure. God bless you. And thank you for supporting us, please. If you are enjoying our work, consider supporting us. And if you are, thank you so much. We really want this work to continue. Oh, bless well, you, yeah. God bless you, darling. Thank you for all your love and support. Oh. Grandchildren Nativity 2021. Before we begin, can you make sure your phones are on silent and all recording is prohibited, um, because it might scare some of the animals. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Hey. Oh, what fun it is to ride on one horse open sleigh.